Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is grafting. Now, I want to start with the basic concepts that we're dealing with, kind of the global idea of, of why we graft. So first of all, the whole concept of grafting is we want to take this piece of um, a mature bearing tree and we want to join it with this plant that was planted by seed and grown up. All right, that's the whole concept is we're taking this piece of a plant and we're joining it with a plant that's growing in a container that's already ready to go. And we, you have to join them and get them to make their connections before they die. All right, because I've cut this one off of a tree and this has a very limited lifespan and I have to get it connected and growing before it dies. All right, now, first of all, why do we do this? All right, we graft plants generally in order to maintain variety. Okay, so what do I mean by maintaining variety? It means that we have to take a plant there. Are, if we want to maintain the clone of the plant, if we want to perpetuate that specific variety of a plant, then we have to use grafting for it because they do not come true to seed. That is, if you plant the seed, from a mango that you like, for instance, and you grow it, the resulting plant from that seed will not be identical to the mother. But if you do grafting, it maintains the identical nature of the tree. So um, that's the first reason we do it, for maintaining variety. The second reason is a little more complicated, but it's basically for, for improved horticulture. All right? Any any grafted tree will respond differently than a seedling tree. A seedling tree like this avocado growing here in, uh, in this container, this is a seedling and this tree will have to go through juvenility. That means it will take sometimes seven, eight, nine years before it begins to bloom and to fruit. Whereas if you graft it with a mature piece of a variety that you, that you know you want, then you can get fruiting in two years, possibly you know, two years, three years, you will get fruiting. Now, it also imparts other horticultural characteristics. A grafted tree is a mature tree, therefore it grows differently. It has a different branch structure, it blooms earlier, like I already said, it doesn't have thorns, like a lot of of juvenile trees have thorns and such. So there are other horticultural characteristics. Also, the rootstock, the, the plant you're gonna graft on, can impart disease tolerance to your two-part tree. It can also make your tree more productive. It can make your tree dwarf. There are many different th reasons that we graft them for horticultural reasons, okay? Um, so when we do graft a tree, which I'll show you in a minute, but when we graft a tree, then we're going to have a two-part tree for the rest of its life. Remember also, we are not creating hybrids. What we're doing is joining the mature variety with the rootstock, with the seedling tree, to make a two-part tree, and that two-part tree will remain that way throughout its life. Okay, now, first of all, what can you graft? All right, you need to graft um, avocados with avocados, mangoes with mangoes, caimito with caimito, jackfruit with jackfruit, poinciana with poinciana, poinsettias with poinsettias, okay? Basically, you have to stay within either the same fruit or the same tree, or the, you can sometimes graft across closely related species of trees, but in general, you're gonna wanna stay with, again, grafting avocados on avocados. Uh, that's the best way to know that you're gonna have success. Now, almost any variety will graft on any rootstock in general, okay? So, what you need to do um, is to choose uh, what time of year you're going to graft different, different plants, okay? Timing is very important. Grafting is extremely easy once you know when to graft them. If you don't know when to graft something, it's very difficult, all right? It's not rocket science, but you do have to, you cannot violate 
the rules of the physiology of the tree. So we have summer grafting uh, plants, we have winter grafting plants, and we have fall and spring grafting plants. Everything is tied to the uh, nighttime temperatures. Summer plants you want to graft when the nighttime temperatures are above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. All right? These are things like mango, like citrus. Okay? Those are the two, one of the two big ones you do during the summer months. Then winter grafting trees are things like avocado, any of the temperate trees, because we can graft, you know, we can grow low chill peaches and low chill plums and uh, low chill apples. All of those you would normally graft during the winter. Then we have spring and fall uh, grafted plants like jackfruit, like uh, mamesopodi, sapodilla. Many of our tropical fruit trees we end up grafting in the fall and the spring. And this is when our temperatures are, our nighttime temperatures are somewhere like upper 50s to um, the upper 60s, all right? And that's, that's a really a good time to try to do the grafting of these, of these trees. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to do two different grafting methods. I want to show you a veneer graft and a cleft graft. There are many, many different ways to graft uh, any tree, but these are two methods that work with a wide variety of species. You can use them on almost everything you do. Now when we get, when you get to really specifics and specialized in grafting, you'll find specific grafting te techniques and you can make modifications, you can come up with your own ways, but those, a veneer graft and a cleft graft are two ways that work very well. Before I get started, I also want to hit a couple of vocabulary words because you'll hear me interchangeably use different words for the things I'm going to do. So, this part, the variety that I cut off, ready to graft, this is what we call the scion, okay? That's S-C-I-O-N. The scion is also called the budwood. It's called the, uh, it's just basically the variety you want to use to graft. You're going to graft it on a rootstock. The rootstock is a seedling planted tree. It could also be done by cuttings. It could be done by air layers. But basically, it's going to be the root system of your two-part tree when you get done. Okay, now this, these right here are three pieces of, of, uh, of scions, three pieces of budwood that I'm going to graft right here. And I also want to point out another um, thing here, which is parafilm. Okay, parafilm, we're going to use parafilm to wrap up our grafts. Parafilm is used in the medical industry to seal test tubes. It's very useful for grafting along with grafting tape. Grafting tape is different than scotch tape. It's different than electrical tape. It is stretchy, so you can pull it like this before it breaks, all right? So you can use it to tie off your, your grafts and it works very well. It's also different than what they call nursery tape that you can buy more readily, you find readily available. And the difference between nursery tape and grafting tape is nursery tape is not as flexible. Another thing you're going to need for it's basically vocabulary or equipment you're going to need, and that's your grafting knife. You can graft with knives, razor blades, X-Acto knives. There's many different things you can graft with. However, there's one commonality to all of them. They must be sharp. You have to be able to sharpen your knives if you use grafting knives. If you can't sharpen a knife, then you may have to use razor blades. Um, I like grafting knives because of their versatility. You can use these for many, many different grafting techniques. If you use razor blades, you can only do certain techniques. You can't expand into other things. Another piece of equipment that is extremely useful, and that is your clippers. 
your clippers are you're going to need these in order to cut off your tree and do the right um, to make the right cut without clippers it's a lot more cumbersome in the things we do and one other thing that you're definitely going to need and that is labels okay when you graft if you don't label your material you were, will forget it okay do not graph something and come back later and say I'll label it when I come back after I eat lunch no no when you do your grafting label your plant immediately after grafting it and make sure that it is legible and that you don't lose the label because otherwise you will not remember what it is you grafted particularly when you begin to graft a lot of things or you become old like me and you forget everything okay um, now we're gonna go ahead and start into our veneer graft and our cleft grafts.